it's my pleasure to introduce someone who needs no introduction, because <laughs> it makes it easy for me. But this is a gentleman that I've known for many, many, many years. I've shared many the evening of, <clears throat> we call it worshiping, <laughs> um, over a wee dram of Irish whiskey. <laughs> and, and he is, as you all know, has got an amazing wit, but a very sharp and keen mind. Being on the board with him has been an, an honor. That's all I can say, an honor. And if we are anywhere, it's because of leadership, and Brian Lennon has provided that. So Brian, please. Thank you, Thank you Jim. Uh, anything I do or say now will be a total anticlimax. I got kind of worried when I, I picked up the program, and I got my badge, you know, and, and I looked, you know, presenter, and it's green. I said, that's a nice touch because I'm Irish, you know. And then I looked at the program, and it said themes, you know, the, the color code for presentations, green for neuroscience. I'm not talking about neuroscience as far as I know. And then I looked further down, and there was a darker green, and it said thorny issues. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've been classified in the thorny department. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I do feel kind of, uh, you know, this is a very big topic for anyone to deal with, and I feel humbled to even attempt to deal with it. And that's the idea of caring for Dr. Glasser's legacy. Uh, we were looking for a name for this uh, presentation, and we came up with this one, Caring for Dr. Glasser's Legacy. Um, and as you know, that is central to our existence as William Glasser International. That is at the heart of it, looking after the core of his ideas and making sure that we can move forward. So what I'm hoping to do today is to give you some idea of what we're doing and, and what we're thinking and what's going on. And uh, I hope that you will have a better idea at the end. And maybe it'll help us clarify things as well. First of all, I would like to introduce our board. Um, th this is the board that represents all of you. And uh, we have here uh, Nancy Herrick, Janet Morgan, and uh, Nancy Buck representing the United States. Uh, then we have Jim Montagnes, Ellen Jelly now representing a little country called um, Canada. Um, and then we have Michael Woods uh, representing Europe, and uh, we were short a person for Europe at the moment. Our bottom left, Beth Blance is standing in for John Cooper while he's chair this year. Um, Beth is representing Australia and New Zealand. And uh, Masaki Kakitani and Rose Inzakim representing the East. Uh, down at the bottom, Juan Pablo representing uh, Central and South America. And Mitchell Messina, wait for this, Mitchell Messina representing South Africa and the rest of the world. <laughs> he wants us to say universe, but we say, Mitchell, control yourself, you know. <laughs> so, uh, in the wings, we have uh, Kim Olver, who is our executive director, uh, the person you're most likely to contact on telephone or by email. And uh, on the right, Terry Hoagland. And uh, Terry has been uh, our office manager, manager of lots of things. And Terry is retiring uh, soon uh, because of all the commitments. I just want to pause and say, Terry has contributed so much over so long to every aspect of William Glasser Institute and now of William Glasser International. And I think uh, you could put your hands together for Terry, even though she's not here. <laughs> I do think at any important meeting, it's important to check with what we're doing, where we're going. Our vision is leading the world with choice theory psychology. And we have had some talk in recent days, maybe we should co just call it choice psychology. Yeah? We've also talked that maybe we should change this to connecting the world with choice psychology. So these are, the, the, everything is changing, and that's the way we, we want it to be provided is improving. Um, the, uh, our mission is to promote the application of choice theory psychology as a powerful, effective, and socially responsible way to help people get what they want and need in their lives. Um, our values, and I know from the survey I sent out in recent months that I know that people are getting this message and they are appreciating it, that these values are in fact reflecting in the work we're doing. Integrity, collaboration, transparency, congruency, respect, 
caring and supporting creativity and growth and inclusiveness. Uh, I think, and I particularly like inclusiveness, that we include everyone at all levels and all countries. A few of us were just commenting yesterday how Dr. Glasser's ideas encompass so many different countries, but they even encompass two sexes. You know, that's pretty good, male and female. <laughs> but they also encompass so many different religions or non-religions, and that is incredibly powerful. You know, an idea, a set of ideas that brings the world together as perhaps no other idea has in the past. Um, okay, our principles, and these, you don't need to read all of this. Basically, what we're saying is that everything we do is built around choice theory psychology. But we also add that we respect the, uh, the, the, uni the charter of, of rights that's established by United Nations. That's a backdrop to our work. And also, we explain that our work is, our WGI is international and democratic in nature. So those are the principles that back up our work. Our objectives, we're moving from, you know, vision to mission to principles to values and now to objectives. What, what do we do? And here we have divided them into nine categories. These are not by any means complete or, or written in stone. Um, none of us have gone up a mountain and come down with a tablet. Um, legal, funding, membership, management, communication, marketing, programs, transition, and research. And for those of you from Europe, I should explain that programs means courses, etc. When we write programs in the short version of the word, we mean computer programs. That is not one of our action groups, you know. Um, okay. I'm going to look at each one of these. I'm going to say a little bit about each, and I hope I represent what the board has been doing and maybe a little bit of the flavor of things that are going on in the background. Uh, legal, in order to be uh, established, although we're international, we needed to have a footing in some country. I mean, if you go to a bank and say we're international, I don't think that would cut much, much uh, ice at all. So we needed to incorporate. So we incorporated in California uh, we were very fortunate to have advice from some uh, experts in international law amongst our members. It was an example of using the resources in our own membership. And it, that was a wonderful collaboration. Uh, we, I've already mentioned the vision, uh, mission, the values, principles, and objectives that we have put together as part of that incorporation. Um, we also have policies. And we are creating policies, and, and very soon you will see the policies we've been working on in the last few days as well. We're putting them on the web as draft policies for you to talk about. Now, why policies? In, a, in, our, in the survey I did, a number of people said we want guidelines rather than policies. I believe we are either an organization or we are not. And an organization needs to think together, needs to have some sort of uh, parameters by which we, we, we work. But built into these is flexibility. Every one of our policies is now carrying as a last line that these are flexible. These will be adapted to suit emergencies or special situations. We need that flexibility built into it. Um, our affiliates around the world, this is uh, an interesting topic because uh, the affiliates need to f fit in with the ethos of being a non-profit incorporated organization. At the same time, we want to reach out to profit-making bodies. So this is a work in, progress, in process that we have already a, a policy about affiliates and how new areas may become affiliates, but we also want to stretch out to, to uh, incorporate other bodies. Um, I have a strange line here at the end, online publication equals official. What we mean by that is that a document becomes official when it goes online. So if we have a policy if we keep it secret, it's not official. You might have the problem, you might have the policy about affiliates, for example, but how do you know it's the latest copy? Simple, you go online and see the latest copy there. So we use the, the internet as a resource and as a powerful resource. Um, that's legal. The next issue is funding and uh, the current situation where, that uh, Jim Montagnes and his committee will outline to you, is that we are in a healthy state. We could be better. I mean, when you talk about money, that could, it's like the child in school, the teacher writes, could do better. We could do better. And in some countries, there, the recessions, et cetera, are causing problems. In other countries, things are going extremely well. So this is a, a mixed bag, but generally we're doing very well. 
But what's particularly significant, as you will have gathered in the last few days, is the endowment scheme. An endowment scheme set up to remember Dr. Glasser and his work and to carry forward. The idea of the endowment is whatever you contribute goes into that endowment and is not touched. Only the benefits are used to, to lead us forward and hopefully to reduce the cost to members and to help us work more effectively. Now, I do want to add a little idea to you, you know, because you're all, you know, away from home right now. Here's a chance for you to rewrite your will without anyone finding out, you know, and put, you know, no one will ever know. I won't tell anybody, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, you will hear more about funding. Membership, this is uh, very dear to my heart because I think membership is at the heart of what we are. We are a membership organization. We are not, a, a, you know, an oligarchy. We are not a, a group of directors that run an organization uh, and just have other people on the sideline. You are the members, you are the organization. Uh, one of the issues we have is the integration of local membership and international membership. Uh, we have some wonderful affiliates around the world which uh, in, in many cases have the blessing of an administrator whom they need to pay or websites they need to pay for, etc. And they use some of the money collected to, as local membership fees. Uh, at the same time, we have had this $75 international membership and we're trying to work towards a situation where these two memberships will be integrated. It's not an easy thing. I reckon it's going to take three to five years and we need to work it out with each area of the world. Some countries have free membership. Some countries, for example, Ireland is 50, 50 euros per year. So we need to integrate all of these. And the ideas from affiliates are very important for us and the dialogue that will go on to do this integration. The establishment of clear advantages of membership. Now, there's one major advantage, and that is by contributing to the membership, you're contributing to the work of Dr. Glasser the work that continues. We are all saddened not to have him anymore amongst us. But remember, we are here because his ideas are alive and are continuing. His ideas continue and will continue forever, I reckon. Now, by being a member, you're actually supporting that movement forward. But also, I believe there should be other perks of membership, discussion forums, um, uh, um, discounts on uh, the sale of books or, or products on our websites, discounts for events and so on. That we need to increase the, the perks of membership. Uh, we also are working at the moment towards an automated membership scheme that will make it much more easy for you to join and to renew your membership and to gain access to special parts of our website and so on. So we want to use uh, modern technology. I say modern technology, you know, this technology is from the last century. <laughs> there is not a child born uh, today who hasn't been born into the world of computers. Um, okay. Um, we are very much a democracy of our members, and I want to explain that because uh, it, it does cause problems for some people. The concept does. If we, are, if we set ourselves up as an organization that relies on affiliates, we need to define affiliates very, very carefully. We then need to check them out. Are they matching our definitions? It becomes very complex. And in some parts of the world, a person has set up a choice theory courses and then runs the show and will not let anyone else run the show. Do we want that sort of scene to be reflected in the way we vote for our board members? Or do we want the members, the rank and file members, to vote for uh, the board members? Because if they do, there is zero conflict with a democratic local organization. How could there be any conflict? They may vote the same people they voted for the local organization, or they may say someone else speaks better English or has better IT skills, would be better for that specific job of international board. So, but I know that some people have doubts about all of this. Say them, share them with us uh, so we can tease all these ideas out. We are here voted by the members, and we are here to work on behalf of the members. Um, the, in our recent discussions, we have looked at the word representative and delegate. And we tend to believe that the board members are delegates. In other words, they're not going to check with the members about absolutely everything. That becomes unwieldy. But every decision, every discussion we have, 
we will bear in mind what the members want or might want. We work on behalf of the members. Uh, so it's a bit like the teacher works in the place of the parent. We work in the place of the members. And we mightn't get it right all the time, but that, that is what we are trying to do. Um, I think another thing that's very important with membership is the idea of unity and diversity. We are providing, as William Glasser International, some sort of unity. Like the globe itself, whoever created the world got, had knew about you know, a circle to join us all together. In any direction, you can go to another country. We're all joined together. But at the same time, we're all different. So we need to have unity on the one hand, and we need to allow for maximum diversity on the other. Uh, that is a challenge, but it's also a blessing. OK, um, the next thing I want to mention is the action group that has to do with management and how we manage and how we run the organization. I hope this is making sense to you. If you don't understand what I'm saying, Masaki has offered to be in my interpreter. <laughs> OK, we have um, monthly board meetings online. Now, the, this is wonderful because it is reasonably cheap. And it's also very, I have to say, it's very user friendly. You get up and you go into your computer and you sit down. You don't have to catch a bus or anything. It has its drawbacks when, broad, when the broadband isn't behaving itself, you know, and voices come out. Uh, uh, you know. At our meeting the other day, we, when we started, we found it surprising to hear people speak in normal voices. And we felt maybe for the first half hour we should talk uh, like that, you know, because it took a little bit of getting used to. Um, but the monthly meetings online are usually two to three to four hours. No one pays the members for taking part in these. People are working once a month for several hours, and that's just the meeting. That's not the work. I want you to know that. And sometimes it was a considerable difficulty. We had quite a problem identifying a time slot that suited everyone. So we've picked, I think it's 1,300 hours UTC. Now that means the poor people on the western side of the United States are getting up at five in the morning. And the poor people in Australia are going to bed at two in the morning. Um, three in the morning. Rose, that's because you write up your notes afterwards. That's <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, Rose, the Koreans are said to be the Irish of the West, and the Irish don't have a clock for time to go to bed, you know, so. Uh, but I, we, we need to recognize that fact, that people are working, not just working long hours, but sometimes very inconvenient hours. Um, I'm very lucky that Europe is in the center of all the time zones for that, but um, yeah. Uh, we also have an annual physical meeting, and originally that, the idea was that we would meet at the international conference, which originally was every year. Now, with having it on even years, every two years, um, that means that there's a year we mightn't have a physical meeting, and we all agree that this is incredibly important. There are things you can do in a physical meeting you can't do in the online meetings. And... Um, so what we have been trying to do is, in the odd years, that's the years when there's no international conference, we try to meet somewhere where there is a conference, where there is something we can attach to. And one of the ideas we've had as well, that we could give a day by the international board, that the, 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 the board members could give a day of workshops. So that would enhance the local um, activities, the local event. Um, I should explain that two, our last two physical meetings were held in Ireland, and that is because the board facilitated me. My mum wasn't too well. I didn't want to travel from base, and they felt I should be there, so they facilitated me. It wasn't part of the Irish Tourist Board. So you're, you, you're all very welcome. You know you don't need a meeting to come to Ireland. Yes. Okay. If you look at what's the headline news on our websites at the moment, um, it's about a concert, you know. If that's the only worry we have in Ireland, we're all right, you know. Okay. Uh, we have then a, a subset of the international boards, the management committee, and the idea is that they will help focus the agenda and focus uh, critical issues for the, the actual board itself. They meet before the main th uh, meeting. So if you're from the western side of the States, you're going to be getting up at four in the morning. Yeah, it gets worse. Um, then there's the executive director and office manager uh, administrators, uh, Tim Oliver and um, Terry Hoagland. 
and they play a very important part in our meetings. Kim takes the minutes and sends out the reports and so on, as well as everything else that she does. Um, then we have action committees, and I'm talking basically about action committees here. This, we divide our work up into working committees that will look after different areas. Now, these, although they usually will have one or two board members, they will incorporate people from outside. And one, one example was our legal board when we incorporated people from, from different backgrounds that had, we had several uh, lawyers on board. I think you call them solicitors? Well, we call them solicitors. Uh, the word solicitor has funny meanings in different parts of the world. But then the word lawyer has funny meanings. Is, um, <laughs> so uh, we had wonderful help from people on that action committee. And I think this is a model of how we work, that, we, that members can come in. And you can volunteer for anything. If you see some topic you'd like to work on, by all means, say so. How we process our ideas. Ideas come up, whether from members or from board members, and they're fed into discussions. We tease them out. They then may shape up into a, a proposal or a policy, which is also a proposal. And then that is... Uh, passed back and forward, edited and so on, and then eventually it's proposed to the board for voting. The, the way we vote, uh, sorry, I'll come to the way we vote in a moment. D this decisions, if you, for example, have a practicum group and you want to have twice the normal n number of members in it, what do you do? You check with the, the, what was the institute. You check with the executive director. Now we've set up a system whereby if these are normal exceptions, the executive director will say, okay. Now, this is, not, this is not the Spanish Inquisition. We have established certain parameters of quality. And one way of making sure that people remember these is if we go beyond these parameters, we will check with someone. That's, that's the idea. So you check with the executive director. If uh, Kim regards this as a, a normal exception, she, she can say, go ahead. Uh, in her own, without consulting anyone. If she thinks this is maybe a little bit problematic, she will pass it on to the management board. And they will consider it. If they think it's, you know, maybe it's someone who every time they do something, they're looking for exceptions. So we need to look into this and see, do we need to adjust our, guide, our, our policies or do we need to adjust something else? And uh, that goes to the board. So there's a kind of a step process. All of these details have had to be worked out at some point so that we can work as an international body. All of these details don't just happen. You know, there's no book written about how to be William Glasser International. Um, I do want to talk about our voting system. It's based on, we've always striven for consensus. It's been difficult, in other words, that everyone agrees. This is not possible with a, a country of several million people. But with a, with a board, it is possible to aim for it. And it's very much consistent with choice theory thinking. So how do you do it? Um, initially, we tried a number of different things, and then Kim came up with this idea she got from Sue. Where's Sue Tomaszewski? Yes, close enough, Sue, yes. <laughs> Get an Irish name, Sue, and then I won't have any problems. Yeah. <laughs> Marry an Irishman. <laughs> and um, I, I want to share this with you because I think it's, it's a very important way of voting, and it's one you might want to use even at home, you know, with your partner. You know, you never know. Um, Five, if you vote five for a proposal, let's say we have a proposal that all members of William Glasser Institute should wear a uniform. How about that? James is getting very worried here in the front row. <laughs> um, wear a uniform, okay, proposal. If you say five, you're saying, I fully agree with this and I will lead it. I will become the leader of this. I will do things about this. If you say a four, you're saying, I, I am fully in agreement with this. I won't lead it, but I will, I will work with it. If you say a three, uh, you're saying, I'm, be careful what fingers I hold up here. If you say a three, uh, <laughs> you are saying, I, I agree with this, but I mightn't have the time to work with it, but I can go ahead, you know. If you say mm, a two, this will get really serious now. If you, <laughs> I hope this doesn't mean anything special in any particular culture. <laughs> I, <laughs> in Colombia, almost everything means something sinister, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, the two, the two means I have a doubt. It may be a minor objection, it may be a big objection. I have a doubt about it, right? A one means, is that finger all right with, yeah, okay. A one means I, I really don't agree with this, but I won't stand in the way. And a zero, 
means I really don't agree with this. I don't want this to happen at all, at all, at all, at all. Right? I added an extra at all because I'm Irish. Um, <laughs> So the, the man asked the policeman, what does the single yellow line mean along the roadside? And he said, that does, means no parking. And he what's the double yellow line mean? He means, that means no parking at all at all. So. <laughs> <clears throat> if, if emotion is passed with, and even these words have different meanings in different countries, this was a wonderful thing we found out on the, in the, the International Board. To table emotion means a totally different thing in Europe from North America. So we, we were careful. Sometimes we're wondering, do, do you mean the same as I mean? You know, um, Who am I? <laughs> Why am I here? Um, but if there's a five, four, three, things are going okay, there's consensus. What, we do, what do we do with a two or a one or a zero? We stop. And we consult with the per person and say, what is the question, or what do you think needs changing, or where do we go? And then we will vote again. Now, if there's a delay there, we can have a problem. So we've worked out a solution for that, because we're trying to get away from majority rule. Believe it or not, majority rule is not democracy. But in most countries, it's the only practical alternative to democracy. Tell me a country in the world that has real democracy. I want to visit it. You know, we don't have consensual voting anywhere. You know, we vote two parties and one party says we're the government because we're the biggest party. That's majority rule. We don't want that. But we don't want minority rule either. We don't want the sort of situation that happens in the United Nations where one, one country can block everyone else. That's minority rule. Surely it's just as bad as majority rule. So we're trying to get a consensual approach to things. So that's, it's not easy, but that's where we're working on. But I want to share it with you because you may use it in different contexts. OK. The next thing uh, is communication. And here we have things like mailing lists and tweets that you get. Problems here arise if you change your email address and don't tell us. Our, our police subsection find it very hard to track you down. Uh, we have newsletters. They're moving more online and becoming uh, mailing newsletters rather than written, uh, rather than published ones. We have our website, and we're hoping to really revamp that a uh, big time, based on survey feedback, and also based on the needs of our members. We need a really good discussion forum. It's not so easy to get a really good one, okay? But we want a really good one. There's the journal, and uh, there's a a man here called Tom Parrish, and he used to be a journal editor. But now he's a poet. Where are you, Tom? I'm getting really worried about him. I'm expecting him to break out in long hair one of these days and go around speaking only to RT types because he's taken to poetry big time and this poetry is very much appreciated. Uh, he's, not, he's not here. He must be, he must, the muse must have taken effect this morning. Um, the encouragement of social media. Now, notice I say encouragement. This presents a problem for us. You know on Facebook, if you're in Facebook, you can write, you know, yesterday I, I got a new cat. Okay. Now, then the next thing, somebody writes in and says, I hate cats. I think there should be this, that, and the other thing. Now, that's all right because you can manage that. You can do something with your quotes. That is not so acceptable in an international board on, on a, an official website. So we encourage social media, and there's some wonderful discussions happen out there but we cannot take responsibility for social media in the same way as we can take responsibility for our own website. Unless you have ideas how we can do it, because there may be things we missed, and technology is certainly improving all the time. Surveys, and we try not to have too many of these, but they will be an important component of our communication system to find out what is happening, what you think. Um, the problem with surveys, you can ask questions that uh, may be not the right questions, so suggest, suggest more. Um, okay, uh, English. English we have adopted as the language of the International Board. It's not to say that there can't be websites in other languages, but simply to make it easy. We haven't decided whether it's North American English or real English. <laughs> John, Cleese, John Cleese was asked once about differences between America, when he came to work in America, the difference between America and England, he says, well, in England we speak English, you know. It's <laughs> 
but really, when it comes down to spelling and punctuation and grammar, we do, we're not fussy about whether it's one or the other or even an attempt. But we, we do need some sort of a, a language to uh, exchange our ideas. So um, English was imposed in my country as it was in many other countries, and it was one of the impositions that worked out well. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we got revenge on the English by getting more Nobel Prizes for literature in their language than they have. <laughs> And there's one more in the pipeline, and it's not me. There's one more in the pipeline. Um, okay, marketing. Marketing is incredibly important, how we, how we tell people about our ideas. And one of the examples of this is the logo, which uh, I think everyone has accepted because you voted for it, you know. And uh, the, way that was, the way that whole plan worked out, we had an action committee. We got en enlisted help from other people. Is Marianella here? Marianella Mendes? Yes, from, from New Zealand. And she guided us into the whole way of setting up a brief, and uh, then we got a, a wonderful uh, online uh, application that allowed us to send out uh, the brief to all over the world. And we got, I think it was 78 contributions. Uh, now, several of those looked a bit like Google, and we thought we better not pick the Google ones. Well, we shortlisted those and offered them to members, and this is the one that the members accepted. So that's an example of democracy, of action committees, and of marketing. Um, encouraging the use of social media, which is very important in marketing, that everywhere, and I encourage you, get involved in FaceTime, get involved in LinkedIn, and whatever t tomorrow brings, and mention choice theory psychology, talk about it, spread the idea around. Um, we have been promoting the international conference, and I think Toronto has done an exceptionally good job about that, and I know that Korea will do one as, as good. Uh, promoting local conferences, that our website, and not just local website, but our international website will promote local conferences as well. Um, the creation of resource center for members, or online resources, this is incredibly important. Um, the promotion of new programs, and here I spelled it in the European way, I had to somewhere I had to show I was European. Um, after all, Europe might win the World Cup, you know, so we have to... <clears throat> yeah. I th something that's important, I know Bob Wobbling has mentioned this many times, and like many of the good ideas we have come from Bob, the encouragement of articles in an outside journals. We need to tell the outside world about choice theory, about reality therapy, about all our ideas. You know, we, we know we, we can learn from one another, but we need to tell people outside. We need to do research out there. We need to do, write articles out there, write letters to, to the paper, whatever. Uh, this is a big, a big issue. And I took on board very much what, what Jim Roy said yesterday. Bill Glasser is one of the leading theorists in internal control psychology. He has been since the 60s. He has spelled it out very loud and clear. Why is he not better known around the world? Well, in the example that he mentioned of, uh, is it Samuel Pink is the author? Yeah. yeah. And uh, or Sam, is Samuel? Yeah. Dan. Dan. Daniel Pink. Okay, it's one of those Jewish names that I always get mixed up. Samuel and Daniel, yes, the bi biblical names. Um, I, I, my mind thinks in groups, you know. I have Gabriel and Raphael as archangels. I get those mixed up. And if I call you John and you're not called John, tell me, especially if you're a woman. <laughs> um, but uh, Daniel Pink wrote this wonderful book called Drive, which I recommend to all of you. And I read it on my way to Australia. And at the end, he speaks about schools using these ideas of internal control. So I say, any, any page now he's going to mention quality schools. He didn't. So when I got to Australia, I got my email working and wrote to Daniel Pink. And I said, there's a guy called Glasser, and he's into internal control, and he has a school system that is exactly in line with what you're talking about and is very successful in different parts of the world. He answered. And he said, several people have spoken to me about this guy, Glasser. I'd better look into it. Yeah. You know, now what I did, you can do. You know, anyone can write to an author. They're actually very accessible. Any authors here will tell you. It's nice to get emails from people. Um, okay. Um, but I do think we need to put Glasser at, uh, in people's minds. This is a leading theorist. This is a leading practitioner. 
this is a world leader, this is a genius, you need to know about him. Okay. Programs, and here I've gone reverted to American spelling. Um, we're looking at the continuance and improvement of RTCT training, the traditional certification structure that we have. We need to improve that. That is a wonderful structure. It's been around since the, the 60s, I think. I, I, I wasn't born then, so I don't really know. You know but um, <laughs> It's been around for a long time, but it, it has been improved constantly, and it is a wonderful structure. We need to continue to improve that. No one's going to take that away. That would be a terrible mistake. Well, we need to create new courses and new applications. And we've had some very exciting discussion in recent times on the board. Let's look at different courses. Let's, why should the quality school course be the same as a reality therapy course? Let's make courses that are based on the needs of the people they target. The content, the structure, the format, the costing, the location, the faculty. Let's meet the needs of the people out there. Let's appeal to their needs as well. In this uh, design of new courses, we're talking about module development, we're talking about linkages as well. Can we link courses together that if a person does one course, they can do another? Um, we've been talking about the difference between introductory courses like the Take Charge of Your Life. This, uh, some of you have been, uh, quite a lot of you have participated in this. Let me spell it out briefly for those who are not aware of it. Take Charge of Your Life, a one-day course that can be given to anyone and can be given by any certified person who has taken a one-day's training. That's the more or less the model we have at the moment. So we, we are offering a new way for people to actually get engaged in some sort of faculty activity and spread these ideas. If we're leading the world with choice theory psychology, we need to make it easy for people to lead the world with choice theory psychology. Right? And by the way, we won't require you to wear a uniform. If we do all of this, we will also need new faculty training model, and not just model, but models. And we will need new faculty levels. Why should the same faculty be required for uh, lead management training as for reality therapy training? And I, I fully agree with, I know Bob has, has an issue about this, about reality therapy. I fully agree. That is the that is the star in our crown. That is the jewel in our crown. That, that must never suffer from anything else we do. And, and uh, the alternative, in fact, is true. It should benefit from all the other courses. That people should say, is there a therapy model associated with this school thing or this management thing? Let's use that as well. You know, it's not an either or. Um, okay. New faculty levels. The faculty level for the take charge of your life is an example. But let's have a lot of new faculty levels. Transition, and I speak of the transition that we had from William Glasser Institute to William Glasser International. And as you know, we passed through a time when we called ourselves William Glasser Association International, or, yes, or uh, so, uh, something like that. Um, but this transition has happened at a time when uh, we were going through all sorts of other problems. Dr. Glasser was ill, and um, Linda was retiring, and there were all sorts of changes happening, and yet it happened, the transition happened fairly smoothly. Um, I do want to pay tribute here to the original William Glasser Institute, which in fact was William Glasser USA, really. And in the Western branch, I don't know why the Eastern branch wouldn't have the rest of the world, but the Western branch took us on as a subset of them. All the countries outside of North America were dealt with through the Western branch of William Glasser Institute. And when I pushed for the idea of the international board, I was saying times have changed. There are bigger bodies around the world. We need to be a truly org international organization, and we need to protect these ideas for everyone. Um, the transition has worked very smoothly. And I, I do want to take off my hat to WGI USA because we had financial things to deal with. Uh, a lot of the money that was in the coffers belonged to them. And uh, we, we had discussions, and everything went incredibly smoothly. And that's, that's the spirit of uh, Joy's theory. OK. Um, we also have need new administrative structures. If we create new courses, our database, for example, is built around a certification model. We need one that will be built around many different certification models. So the administration needs to change. And how central administration links to uh, local administration, all of these issues need to be sorted out. OK. Um, Research, um, I think this is incredibly important. It is one thing to say, I believe 
uh, you know, you, you should wear a hat when it's cold. You really need evidence that wearing a hat when it's cold works. All right? Let me give you an example. A lot of guidance counselors, certainly in Europe, uh, will give tests of you know, verbal reasoning, numerical reasoning, perceptual reasoning, and then they say, this kid is very good at verbal reasoning. I think this kid should do languages. Wrong. There is research that shows that kids with high verbal reasoning have a problem learning other languages, probably because their own language is so well structured in their heads that they don't have this need or hunger for other languages. So research tells you the world is not the way you think it is. Is the world flat? No, it's not. Research will tell you, you go a little bit, do a little bit of investigation, and you find you don't fall off anything, you keep going around in circles. Um, so we need, to, we need to establish a research mentality. I joke with colleagues who are in education that we really need to introduce science into our schools. They say, but we have, I mean, we have physics and chemistry and biology. I say, yes, but science is a way of thinking. Uh, I mean, I've gone to doctors who are supposedly scientists, and they don't work like scientists. They work like people using a, a list of symptoms to just, they don't do any thinking about it. Science surely is thinking, checking, is, the, is what I'm seeing true? Is it real? However you want to define it. Um, so we need to establish this research mentality. A major shift in emphasis at every level of our work. If you're a counselor in private practice, how do you know that your counseling is effective? Have you some way of checking that? It may be as simple as asking the person to give, them a, give themselves a score out of 10 each time they see you. 10 is, I'm happy, and zero, I'm not happy. You know, you're beginning to introduce some sort of a quantitative or qualitative method into your work. You're not taking it for granted. You know? um, I think it's Irving Kirsch, I never get this guy's name right. He wrote a book about uh, the, em the emperor's new drugs. Any of, any of you read that book? Fully recommend it. He, he did a massive piece of research into antidepressants. And he found, surprise, surprise, that antidepressants don't work. He found, surprise, surprise, they work better than a placebo. So he looked at why do they work better than a placebo? an amazing piece of scientific research, very carefully planned. He found they work better as a placebo because they're better placebos. <laughs> People think a bitter pill works better. If a bill, you know, and it's amazing. But, but, in his last two chapters, this is a real scientist, in the last two chapters he said, hold on a minute, the same happens in therapy. A lot of people benefit from therapy because they think it's, you know, it's a placebo effect. Now, we need to be sure that ours is not just a placebo effect. We need to go beyond that. So have a look at, at uh, Kirsch's book, um, and it'll give you some ideas. We need to identify existing research, and Janet and her committee have done wonders on that. If you go onto the website, you'll actually get lost in the research department there. There's so many different things. Establishing what has been done already. Now, this is something that Bob Wobbling has been doing for years. He has been pushing this for years. Where is she? Rose has been pushing research in uh, Korea and has over 100 studies done at third level you know, research institutes. And I'm sure there's a lot more of you have done, have done research. LMU have done some wonderful research in recent times. Um, the, we need this research, but we also need to know where it is. We need to be able to quote it, and especially research that's quoted in other journals and other centers. We need to promote new research. And one of the ways we'll do that is collect useful resources. In today's workshop, I believe, they're giving out resources you can use. How could you measure someone's basic needs, for example? How can you, you, know, how can you measure some of the parameters that we, ha that we use in our work? Um, also, the encouraging of the research mentality at every level. Not everyone is a statistician, but everyone can be a scientist. OK. so. Where are we going? I'm keeping an eye on time here. There's our, our nine action groups, and we could have more. These are the first structures we created. These are the way we move forward, right? These are the headings under which we move forward. I want to speak briefly about the survey I carried out um, a few months ago. And I know, I do appreciate the fact that not all members got it, and we want to check on why that happened, but I, a big number did get it. 
and a small number replied, this happens with surveys. But my idea was just to get some background information about what people thought. And I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but I do want you to see at least the answers. And I've protected anonymity by removing some words that might indicate who said what. And I've also um, put things in a different order from the, the order of replies. But I don't know if you can read it from there. You possibly cannot. Um, one of the questions was regarding uh, the work of the WGI board, what aspects do you like? To give you a quick summary, people said they liked the inclusiveness, they liked the transparency, they liked the information, that, and in fact it was reflecting a lot of the values I spoke about. You know, we'll maybe publish some of this somewhere so that you can read it more carefully because it's not, it's not really terribly legible there. Uh, the other, another question I asked was, what would you prefer to be different? And these answers varied from big issues to smaller issues, smaller issues like, why doesn't it work on my iPad? And um, <laughs> I know, I, I take, take that back, I know for Apple users that's not a small issue, <laughs> that's a big issue. That's, um, I'm using an iPad here, by the way. Um, but um, there were all sorts of ideas about um, being more user friendly on our website. Um, every country to have a representative in WGI. Now, let me explain this democracy thing a little bit more. If all of you want black and all of you want white, what do we do? We can give you gray. Or we can give you black today and gray and white tomorrow and alternate. You know. But there's no, for group decision making, there's no easy way to satisfy everyone. But if you say something, we will listen. We will take it on board. But if you don't get what you want, come back to us, because we do our best, but we, we cannot satisfy everyone. We can't run the five voting system around the world. You know, we haven't found a way to do that yet. Um, we, we work out a way for, to get this information to you in a better format. Another question was, what new ideas would you suggest to the board? And a lot of these were in line with things we were doing already. But um, um, trademark mental wellness, I'll just pick a selection more studies on the efficacy of RT, a forum to share strategies, monthly video podcasts and counselling. Lots of good ideas there, which the board are aware of, and we're going to work on these ideas. Right? Um, there's actually a lot of the ideas in that section. Okay. The need for RT to be present in graduate programmes. Well, let's design a course that we can offer for people who want to teach it in graduate programmes. Let's make it easy for them to do that. Okay, I want to talk about our leadership role because this, in a democratic organization, how do you act as a leader? Well, I think the word says it. You're not a boss, you're a leader. The, the, the board is, is a leadership board, it's not a bossing board. Uh, and once we establish certain policies, we do need to protect those, but we protect them on behalf of the members. I see it very much like a referee in a, in a sports competition, a good referee, I should say. The referee is representing both sides, representing everyone, making sure that things are, happen uh, as people have intended. Um, we're centered on our membership. We, the issue of policies or guidelines, I don't think, we might have some guidelines, but I do think we need policies. They're central to the work we do. But you can disagree with the policies. You can say, I don't think that's a good policy. It's not covering something, or it's not covering something well. Uh, we need core structures with reasonable flexibility, which I've already mentioned. Uh, but we also need to establish the limits of the flexibility. It's, we're not an adhocracy. You know, we're not a group of do whatever you want. We, we work together. Right? Um, we need to uh, include or be more inclusive of our affiliate organizations and create structures there so we work together better. Uh, we also need to give full recognition to our faculty, but we are not a faculty organization. Let me explain that. If faculty were running the organization, there's a dual role problem, because many faculty earn their livelihood from choice theory. But our vision is leading the world with choice theory psychology. So some people may give courses for free, some people will charge, some people will charge a lot. But the, the, uh, the overriding vision is leading the world with choice theory. Right? It's not making a profit out of choice theory. 
And people, people have a right to earn a living, but that is not the, prior, the primary thing in our, in our modus operandi. Okay. Um, but faculty, I mean, you all know that the people who have contributed most over the years to WGI in all its shapes and forms have been faculty. And we are blessed by having absolutely wonderful faculty around the world. Um, okay. Um, one of, the, one of the aspects of our leadership role is to identify and protect the core ideas. That has been declared in Nashville, that's what people voted for, to protect our core ideas. To encourage constant development and creativity, not simply to take the ideas as a static thing. Dr. Glasser said, and that's it for life. No, he would never have wanted that. And many of our senior faculty people know that one of the problems they had with Dr. Glasser is that from year to year he would change his ideas, and they had to run to keep up. That's why they're all so fit, you know? And we need to do that. We need to build in that ongoing creativity and development, right? Let me introduce you to something that's close to my heart. This is the view I grew up with. These are the mountains of Moore in County Down. But what you see in front of them is the golf course, Newcastle Golf Course, County Down. This is where my dad played golf for 50 years, right into his 90s. Now, why am I showing you that? Okay, let's suppose you're one of those people there playing golf. And you come back tomorrow, and you find that someone has removed the mountains. Can you still play golf? Yeah. If the ball, somebody says the ball should be orange, you can still play golf. If the number nine iron should be adjusted to become a number 9.5 iron, you can still play golf, right? If, however, someone, probably an Australian or a South African, <laughs> comes along and says, a set of rugby goalposts would look well there, do you know? <laughs> uh, the golfers are not going to be too happy. There's a dividing line between golf and rugby. There's a time when it's no longer golf, right? Though it would be fun to see the golfers tackling each other going down the fairway. Sorry? It stands for hazard. It stands for hazard. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but part of, part of our issue as, as a, 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 your representative is in fact to identify and protect the core ideas and to encourage development and creativity, but also to know where the limits are. When do we stop being choice theory? When do we stop being reality therapy? If we set up policies, where, do they, where are the limits? When do we stop being whom we are? And it's not an easy question to answer. Right? But I, I, I'm a firm believer that the members have a certain picture in their head of what this organization about, is about. Therefore, we need to reflect that. For example, in our policy on conferences, do you want to come to a conference where every speaker is from a different uh, theoretical background? I don't think so. Do you want some people from a different th theoretical background? I would imagine you do. But you want the core to be choice theory and its applications and developing those ideas. You don't want the same stuff every year. So we're trying to reflect that in the policies. But it's about whether you want goalposts in the golf course or not. You know. Um, Okay, if, you, if any of you don't understand golf, neither do I, it's kind of obvious from that. Um, we, need, we want to foster the quality of our courses, so when we talk about the number of people who should be in a course, what we're thinking of is the quality of the courses, and that is something that people can contribute to, the debate on that and how we can improve the quality of our courses. Uh, we want to check on, sorry, to check our approach with sound psychological science. If tomorrow, a piece of research said, there are not five needs, there are four needs. What do we do? We need to respect psychological science. And by the way, I say psychological science very deliberately. There is a feeling about that if science is done with a scanner in a hospital or a microscope in a laboratory, it is somehow superior to psychological science. We work with the mind, not the brain, although the brain research is incredibly relevant. But we need to become experts in research into the mind, and that is not easy. The fact that it's not easy has been evidenced in the fact that some of the most powerful statistical tools came from psychologists. 
factor analysis, analysis of variance, some of these tools owe their origins to psychologists because of the challenge of measuring mental variables. It, became, it was so complex. Okay, caring for uh, Dr. Glasser's legacy. I want to say a few words about the legacy. I used these slides before in Los Angeles, and I've been watering this flower ever since, so it hasn't died. <laughs> um, choice theory is at the heart of what we're doing now. It's at the, but it is a theory. I really don't believe you can put choice theory over a door and expect people to be queuing up to learn about it. You know, it's not, it doesn't turn people on too much, not yet anyway. Hope maybe someday it will. But it, the, the individual applications, and especially reality therapy, yeah, people, this means, a lot of people think they know what it is, but they, they, and they don't, but they, they will at least come to courses in reality therapy or lead management or quality schools or personal well-being. Look at what uh, Satoshi Aoki is doing in Japan. Like hundreds and hundreds of people taking courses in lead management, basically. You know? All of these things are possible. And we need to explore new areas. Um, and I've put this up before, and I've put it up again because I think it's relevant. Uh, community coaching, relationships, parenting. Let's look at all sorts of ideas. And one of the ideas we want to promote with our members is, if you have an idea for a course, it could be anything, eating carrots and choice theory. I don't mean eating choice theory, but the link between eating carrots and choice theory, whatever. Try the course, create the course, make it a quality course, try it out. And if you think this could be of interest to other members, come to WGI. And maybe we can make this one of our new official courses that will have certain protection and marketing by WGI, right? So we're saying to people, create new courses, come up with new ideas. Um, and even if you, if you have a course, you've created yourself and you, have, you make an income from that, you may want it to have uh, some seal of approval from WGI. We need to be sure it reflects what our members want, generally, obviously. There's a difference between a Spanish Inquisition and a democratic body. You know, there's, there's a slight difference. Okay, reality therapy, protecting the core. Dr. Glasser, in the, the book that Jim Roy has written so well, is defined as a champion of choice. If you read that book, you realize something new about Dr. Glasser you might not have appreciated up to now. His incredible courage, the courage of his convictions, he saw that the world wasn't flat, it was round, and he said it. In another era, he would have been Spanish Inquisition, out of existence. <laughs> he survived, and he kept saying things that were not terribly acceptable to his colleagues and to people around the world. Now, surely be to goodness, if we backtrack on his courage, we betray his legacy. If we put sugar on the pills to the extent that is no longer recognized as choice theory psychology or reality therapy. Are we not betraying that legacy? Is that what we want to do? I believe we need have the courage of his convictions and the courage of our convictions. And look at what he said about therapy, that almost everything we do is a choice. He didn't really say that mental illness doesn't exist. He said that that which is called mental illness is a, cho is a set of chosen behaviors chosen by a person as the best way they know at the moment to meet their needs. An incredibly positive message reaching out to people in, in personal distress. This is a message of positivity and hope. Now those who want to sell you tablets for everything that happens to you don't like that message. Tough. Tough. Equality schools. Remember the golf course. The mountains can go. The golf ball can change color. But if you put goalposts on the golf course, it's no longer a golf course. And Dr. Glasser's idea of the quality schools. Discipline. Oops, no. Any attempt to control other human beings is not compatible with choice theory. It's a goalpost on the golf course. There has to be a limit somewhere. There has to be something where we say, that is no longer choice theory. And we need to say it nicely to people, but we need to say it. We need to have the courage of our convictions and of Dr. Glasser's convictions. Um, lead management. 
his ideas, you know, that these are revolutionary ideas, and yet, as Satoshi's work is showing, these are being accepted by very hard-nosed business people in one of the leading industrial nations of the world. And some of the bigger companies that are in the world today are using ideas very similar to Dr. Glasser's. They are realizing you cannot control people. And if they're unsure, just ask them, can you control your husband or wife or partner? <laughs> Personal well-being, Dr. Glasser has ideas here on personal well-being where the rest of the world is talking about illness. He has talked about personal well-being. And you know this was a, especially dear to his heart in, in the last decade of his life. And this is something that we can become the leading experts in, how people can become happy. We shouldn't be afraid to use the word happy. We shouldn't be afraid to reach out to the person in the street with these messages. They're very powerful. Um, I mentioned before what I call the seven political deadlies. We are not a political organization, but you are. Individuals are. And what I call the, the seven political deadlies, exploitation. Uh, people by uh, one group exploiting another. Punishment, using punishment, uh, which uh, isolates people, ostracizes them. Torture. Can you imagine the torture after... In Europe, when we saw World War II, one World War II, now I wasn't there, but, but I heard about it. Uh, when we saw that the torture that went on there, and torture has become a debatable, a debatable issue in some parts of the world. I think torture is okay again. Tyranny of one group over another, of one section of the population over another. Killing the ultimate external control. I will kill you. Surely that is the ultimate external control. For any human being to take that decision except in pure self-defense, how can we defend it if we're, you know, as choice theorists? Abuse of any type, any type, and I add to sexual abuse, physical abuse, I add bureaucratic abuse, political abuse, there's all sorts of types out there, and war. The last time I heard Dr. Glasser speak, he was a bit shaky on his feet. He couldn't remember his ideas clearly. But the last thing he said, that he disagreed with a well-known politician whose name I won't mention, but he said what he disagreed about was war. And he said, war is wrong. Think about it. War is wrong. Why should any nation be killing another nation or any group of people be declaring war on another? It, that's a failure of everything we stand for. Trying to talk to people, trying, uh, doing anything um, before d resorting to war. It has to be, it, it's not the last resort. It's no resort at all. So I suggest that these are ideas that we accept as individuals, that we remember that this, there's a political dimension to our ideas. We are not a political organization. We will not campaign for anything as a body. Uh, our articles of, of incorporation I don't allow that in any case. But as individuals, we are human beings, and we believe in choice theory, we believe in respecting other people. So I think it's very important that we r think of these ideas. Uh, we can remove a lot of these ideas from our world by a lot of these activities, by leading the world with choice theory psychology, by introducing people to not only to the seven curing habits, but to the skills required to use those seven curing habits. People don't just say, oh, I want to negotiate. They need to know how to negotiate. They need to know the alternatives. This is what we're trying to do in William Glasser International. This is what our board is about. Um, we're trying to uh, extend these ideas at every level. Think about it. Uh, in the last few days, I've heard people say, we care about people. We want to change the world. There are those who think we're idealists. Well, we are changing the world. You know, go into a Glasser quality school Go, if any of you have not been in a Glasser Quality School, please go. Please see a Glasser Quality School and see the changes there. Amazing, mir miraculous changes. Changes that many teachers say, totally impossible. Totally impossible. So go and see the impossible. Go and touch it with your own hands. Do become scientists, you know. Um, we can change other things. You know that choice theory has changed your life. I came across a quote somewhere, and I've lost it, about how a single book can change your whole life, how true that is. 
you know, how just you open a book one day and boom, your life is never going to be the same. I see our work as, um, you know, we have this emblem which represents the world. But I think it represents the world at every level, every way, from every angle. And all the colors of all the flags and all the people who don't have flags, we represent all of those. And we're caring for Dr. Glasser's legacy. There have been questions in the past about who is Dr. Glasser's successor. Who is Einstein's successor? Who is Galileo's successor? Geniuses don't have successors in that sense. You know, they don't have individual successors. But I'm going to answer the question, who is Dr. Glasser's successor? You are. Each one of you is his successor. Each one of you, you carries these ideas into your country, into your family, into your professional life. Right? We all are his successor. We all work together. And I think that I'll end with that word, together. Not the nicest of words in itself, but the concept for me is one of the nicest concepts in the English language. That we work together, caring for Dr. Glasser's legacy. That's all I have to say. If people have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. If people want to throw tomatoes, I'll do my best to eat them with salad. Thank you. I, I'll just add I just, a few comments I wanted to add. I nearly forgot about them. I want to, we don't normally criticize, but I do want to criticize somebody. This is somebody, uh, somebody who does nothing, right? I mean, you have to criticize somebody who does nothing. We all of us say from time to time, somebody should do this. Somebody should introduce a new program. Somebody should write a new policy. Somebody should write to the papers. Somebody should phone the radio station. Somebody. Well, I have to tell you, somebody's doing nothing. <laughs> Change is somebody to maybe I, maybe I should phone a radio station. Maybe I should write a letter to that author. Maybe I should do something. And let's leave somebody out of it. The other thing, I would appeal to you to be patient. We have lots of work to do. And I, in the same voice and with total Irish lack of logic, I appeal to be totally impatient. One changes and one changes soon. We want the mixture of patience and impatience. I'm not sure how to blend that, but that's what we need. We need to move fast. We need to get more work done. But at the same time, there is a lot of work to be done. And people, the more you realize that, the better for everyone. Um, thank you very much. And if, if you have any questions, I will do my best. I just wanted to say that I miss his voice every day, but his voice is in every word he's ever written. And I would like to encourage you in all the beautiful contributions and the work that you are doing to please encourage the people that you speak to to read his books because you will hear his voice in every book that he has written. And I reread his books, and I can hear his voice talking to me. So please encourage people in all the teaching that you do to hear that voice through those books. And I thank you very much for doing that. Uh, one thing, and this is really important for every one of you, uh, there are newspapers that you read, there are magazines that you read, the Phi Delta Kappen, the APA Monitor, uh, any place, a letter to the editor is almost always accepted for publication. And you could, a uh, letter to the editor, uh, a book review, if you see something that uh, Brian or somebody else that has come out with, Submit it for, like the Phi Delta Kappen has a half a million circulation, and getting a book review accepted is a very easy thing to do. Isn't that great to know? So if you really want to advocate for choice theory uh, 
positive addiction, reality therapy, quality schools, lead management, however you wish to do it, there are theaters by which we can go to. We can go to uh, the editorial, we can go to the book review. There are various things that we can do. The only thing we can't do is not do it. Thank you. Hi, um, I, would, I would just like to dovetail on, on uh, what was just said. I have had a lot of letters to the editor published in a small community paper, and they have a lot of impact. And if you can couch it in something that is in the news and dovetail it on that, it really works. I've had at least five or six letters to the editor published. And, and you know, I'm just a, a mediocre writer in a small town in, in Ohio. <laughs> um, anyway, so I would really encourage people to do it. Really do it. Thanks.